Greetings! I am Saito Ninja and I just saw Star Trek Into Darkness. Now if you haven't saw the spoiler warning at the beginning of this video, guess what? Spoiler warning. But I'm going to try to keep the spoilers down to the minimum. Now the best way I can really sum up this movie and very few was is that it suffered from sequel-itis. This movie felt like it was a sequel, not just to the last movie, but to every single Star Trek movie. Now, in some cases, that necessarily wouldn't be a problem. Yeah! It just made it feel a whole lot weaker. Now, as a Trekkie, I don't mind those references, but this movie had a little too much of them. The whole sequel itis thing, again, this movie, it's basically a sequel to Rafa Khan. Make that sequel slash remake of Rafa Khan. Khan, true, they um, changed some of the rules up, but it's basically just that. How much of a, again, remake or slash sequel to Rafa Khan? Um, we did get a surprise cameo of Old Spock, who made his cameo in the last movie, and I'm kind of wish he didn't. He didn't, like, as soon as I saw Old Spock in the movie, and he was, and he told New Spock about his account of Khan, it, like, it felt like the movie just, for me, almost died from there, basically. Gleam because like oh crap I know exactly how this is going to fall out and old spot kind of and I mean new spot knows too To now it was interesting to see the whole um Race and um scene you no know, and Rafficon you see Spot go into the warp core to do whatever type of repairs here the rules are reversed and you do get that classic so I got seen from Rafikon, so for Cut is the one in the radiation chamber and Spark is outside doing the whole You are my friend and I am dying speech. Basically just that now I did cry a little but still cheesy and it was kind of felt kinda of on hearing Spark yell Con! Fuck! That's not... Again, as a Trekkie, none... I felt the emotion of it, but... When you think about it, it was real. Now, now eventually there were, of course, lead up to... Spock having a fisticuff fight with Khan, which to me made perfect sense, since... Basically, Khan being the augment versus Spock, which is basically... More or less equal to Khan in many ways. Just as strong, just as fast, just as smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made a perfect sense. Then again, Khan is basically Captain America. Yeah, Captain America is basically Khan. But again, don't get me started why I don't like Cap. But say, but yeah. Now, um. Now there was something that I kind of almost wish they did focus a little more attention on was the whole violence is bad, all this violent eating and revenge could have been focused a lot more uh, than the whole violent, uh, than the whole revenge plot. Now Star Trek as a core is very much anti-war. It's about peace, not violence. But here, that again, they did touch upon that. I just felt like they should have made that more of the focus, or, or bring it into the spot like a little bit more. Because again, it didn't felt shoehorn in the movie, but at the same time, it just felt like that was a message that they should have focused more on. 
I'm glad that they had it in, though, because one of my main concerns about going this movie is that it'd be a very much poor war type movie here. I'm glad it had, it had the whole anti-war, what the reason why the fairies and have some other rules, and about Starfleet not being militaristic. Let me get this one call. Starfleet is not the military of the fairies in. They're explorers. They're not soldiers. Okay? If Aang said, oh yeah, go around, go around! Every single captain in Star Trek get the whole, we're not soldiers, speed. Cart did it. It's all the car did it. Cisco did do it. Janeway did it. And of course, Captain Archer. So it does it. They're not soldiers, they're explorers first and foremost. I am glad. At the end of the movie, we see them set out for the five-year mission. Glad. Now, for the sequel, what I want out of the sequel is just a flat-out Star Trek movie. No references to what had previously been done. I want a classic Star Trek tale. You know, with its own original story, not bogged down by what happened in the other con in the other universe because as I said before this movie is too much like a sequel to all the other Star Trek movies now again now I would buy this movie on DVD when it comes out but so then like then I'm probably not gonna see it again if it was like it did with the last one well, because the last, because the 2009 Star Trek movie was just plain awesome. It was a far better movie than this one. This one, it's good. Good, you have all the classic Star Trek characters you want interacting the way they should. But this one is too much like a sequel. So, if I was going to give it a star rating, I'm actually going to have the same... I'm gonna be a little harsh about three and a half stars out of five. It's not the best Star Trek movie, but it's a good solo one. I would probably put it on the same scale as Star Trek 3. Three, again, a good solo movie, just not as good as the Rafficon. Well, I'm sorry to Ninja. No. Thanks you guys for watching. And remember, live long and prosper. And unfortunately I couldn't wear these uniforms to the theater.